No, you messed it up. <laughs> You're stupid. So today's daily dose of stupid, um, actually today's daily dose of stupid is twofold. So there are two people that are the subject of today's daily dose of stupid. And to really set the stage here, I think you need a little bit of background. So the media is just absolutely ecstatic at some of the new minorities in the house. And some of the headlines have read, for example, the most religiously diverse house of representatives there's ever been which could have just as easily said the least Christian house of representatives that there's ever been. And that's really what the media is excited about, which by the way, kind of goes against some of the things that Adams and Jefferson believed in because they believed in freedom of the religion. But they also said that from a personal standpoint, even though the American people can elect whom they want, they think that Christians really should be the ones that are in leadership positions. And, and Adams and Jefferson both asser asserted this. But anyway, the reason that I bring that up is because there is a the first Muslim woman that has ever been elected to the House of Representatives was sworn in, Rashida Tlaib. And there w there's a lot of problems with her just besides what we're about to talk about because she is wildly anti-Semitic. The very first day in office she spent with Linda Sarsour and Amir Zahir which Sarsour has close ties to Louis Farrakhan, a well-known anti-Semitic, and or a well-known anti-Semite, and also once claimed that it was an honor and a privilege to share a stage with the terrorist Rasamid O'Day, who was personally involved in the killing of Jews and a sympathizer with Hezbollah. So just really horrible people really, really terrible. And these are people that she has seen fit to associate with. By the way, the map in her new office also has a post-it note with the word Palestine on it, pointing at Israel. So basically asserting that the Israel state should not exist. This woman is a real piece of work, especially when it comes to her hatred of the Jews. But anyway... Um, the other day she had, this was an event that was hosted by moveon.org and she had this to say about the president. And when your son looks at you and says, mama, look, you won, bullies don't win. And I said, baby, they don't because we're going to go in there and we're going to impeach the mother. So you can hear their wild applause. Everybody's excited because she used the F bomb to describe the president. Look, this is beyond the pale, no matter what side of the political aisle you're on. There are even Democrats that saw that and said, that's, that's too far. That's not helpful. You don't say that about the president, even as much as we disagree with him. And that's exactly the right attitude to have. I've never used language like that to describe Barack Obama, President Clinton. I mean, there is a certain amount of respect for them as human beings, first of all, because I wouldn't use that term to describe a human being. But I also wouldn't use that term to describe a president. You have more respect for the office than that. It's not helpful. It doesn't get your point across. All it does is, I guess, make her feel better. But let's break this down a little bit. Um, first of all, it's not even technically correct. Because Trump, if you're asserting that he's the one that was the bully, and I assume that you are since he's the one you're talking about impeaching, well, he did win. He won the election. You may not like it, you may not agree with it, you may not understand how it happened, but yeah, he actually did win. And so when you say bullies don't win and assert that Trump is a bully, well, he did win. He already won. And so it's a it's technically not correct. But on top of that, to me the most disturbing part of this whole thing is that she said this to her son, who even her oldest son, and I don't know which one she was talking to, but even her oldest son is maybe 14 at the oldest. I couldn't really find his age. I tried to do some research on it. And I found his name, but I couldn't find his age. But just based on the pictures, and I'm going off of this just based on kind of eyeballing it, he's certainly not an adult. He's maybe 12, 14-ish, somewhere in that area, maybe even younger. I'm not really sure. But that to me is the thing that bothers me the most because – as much as it is disgraceful and distasteful, 
to me, the biggest travesty here is that's how she's raising her child. And another thing that is a little ironic about it, I thought that there was the whole thing about Muslims not swearing. Like, I, isn't that actually part of the Quran? I know that they're, even though I have some pretty deep-seated disagreements with them, the Nation of Islam, for example, they are pretty strict about not swearing. And so I believe that's actually in violation of her religion to say something like that about anybody, to use that kind of language for any reason. But it really does make me sad that she's raising her son that way, and that just uh, really is terrible. Because I look back, for example, with my parents, and my parents never referred to Barack Obama, Bill Clinton that way. And those are the only presidents that I can remember because they were the only ones I was alive for. Uh, I was born in the, uh, the George H.W. Bush era. But I can never remember at any time in my lifetime, my parents even com coming close to using language like that to describe a president of the United States. And even though they disagreed with them and talked to me about that because they were, you know, politically kind of to the right, too. They never got that heated about it that they felt comfortable using foul language to describe them. You can disagree with a person's beliefs. You can disagree with their policies without attacking the person themselves. And that seems to be something that we have completely lost in this country. And this thing was so reprehensible that it even drove away several Democrats, including Doug Jones. And I'll give Doug Jones credit on that. He actually called her out for saying that and said that it, it didn't help her and it wasn't something that he would approve of. But unfortunately, there are some stupider Democrats that happened to go to the mat and actually defend her. So Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the golden standard for stupid nowadays, said Republican hypocrisy at its finest, saying that Trump admitting to sexual assault on tape is just locker room talk, but scandalizing themselves into faux outrage when my sis says a cuss word in a bar. GOP lost entitlement to policing women's behavior long ago. Next. All right, so there's a couple problems with this. But I would like to start out by saying this. On its surface, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has a little bit of a point. But she's kind of like that kid, and we all knew that kid when we were little, that they were trying really hard to impress others. And because they were trying really hard to impress other people, they would do all kinds of crazy, stupid things. And they would start out okay, like it would start out actually kind of cool, but they pretty much always <laughs> face-planted like right into a brick wall. That kind of feels like what a Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is. She's that kid that will take any dare or, you know, build this gigantic ramp for their bike and then wind up really hurting themselves when they try to do something cool with it. It's like they start out okay and then, whoa, nope, 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 face first in the mud. And that tends to be sort of a pattern with her. So she starts out with a decent point, which is the people that just brushed Trump's locker room talk about that saying that he'll grab him by the, you know, what that just said, ah, you can't take that seriously. That doesn't matter. That's just, you know, guys being guys and him saying it in a private setting. No, that was wrong. And people that tried to make excuses for it and said that it wasn't wrong. Those people were wrong for doing that. And there is a certain group of that people. In fact, I would guess probably most of the people that tried to excuse Trump on that, that are really upset about this. And you know what? Those people absolutely are hypocrites. You're right, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. I agree with you on that. However, here's the funny part about it. She's saying that Trump was wrong for doing that and that these people that said what Trump did was wrong, but, or, or sorry, what Trump did was fine, but her saying this was a problem are hypocrites. She's right on that too. But then she goes and defends this woman for saying this, which means that by her own definition that she just presented, she is a hypocrite because she's excusing what this woman said and saying, well, what Trump said was beyond the prale. Okay, then by the definition that you just gave, that means that you too are a hypocrite. And this is something that you need to be cautious about whenever you accuse somebody of being a hypocrite. See if you can flip it back on yourself and if it still works. 
Because if it does, then that means you're also, by calling them a hypocrite, admitting to being a hypocrite yourself. And so Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez basically throws out what is a decent point and then gets about halfway through the tweet and then just slams smack into a brick wall <laughs> and refers to herself as a hypocrite by her own logic. And here's another thing that I do want to point out. There were Republicans that did condemn that at the time. There were quite a few Republicans, including uh, even Martha Roby, who I thought it was really disingenuous and she was doing it for political gainsmanship. But the point is, there were Republicans that did come out and condemn it. And so it's not as though the entire GOP came out and said, yeah, it's just locker room talk, talk don't worry about it, it's fine. No, there were a lot of especially conservatives that came out and said, yeah, that's, that's reprehensible. That's horrible. You don't, you don't say that about women. And there were several people like me that didn't vote for him, that that was part of the consideration, the way that he treated women, even before that clip came out. But let's also look at this. If you're following Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's logic, she basically leaves herself with only two options. She can A, either completely dis dismiss Trump and say, you know what, that was just locker room talk and we shouldn't have cared about that. Or, because she defended this woman, she has to say they were both wrong. But the way that she does it there is she creates an inconsistency within herself in that same tweet. And so what's funny about that is I don't think she's quite bright enough to even realize that that's exactly what she did. <laughs> Okay, so y'all know I'm a big stats and numbers guy. So here's some fun facts for you. People that like this video and subscribe to the Tactics Radio YouTube channel are 200% more likely to be satisfied with their internet video content and 400% more likely to have a reasonable, rational conversation about religion or politics with their friends and neighbors. Also, four out of five people that subscribe to this channel have more successful and fulfilling lives. And that fifth guy was just a social justice warrior with a stick up his butt. Also, another fun fact, 82% of all statistics on the internet are completely made up.